Hello, everybody. Hello. I'm London Breed. I'm mayor of the city and county of San Francisco, and I am so excited to be here today. We all know that there is a real crisis in our city, and I know that we hear that word used on a regular basis. But in this particular case, what we see happening with those who are struggling with mental illness and substance use disorder and chronic homelessness is something that we see every day and we need to take aggressive action to help address this issue. And I am so excited that I am standing here with Supervisor Hillary Ronan and Supervisor Matt Haney and Supervisor Raphael Mandelman to announce that even though we have had two competing measures, we have come together to do what is in the best interest of this city to introduce today at the Board of Supervisors a compromise that is going to help us address the most significant problem in our city. I not only want to thank the supervisors, but I want to thank Lou Gerardo. And many of you remember Lou as someone who worked with the Board of Supervisors back in 2012 and 13 to help with a compromise for CPMC and the community benefits and the work that they needed to do to support San Francisco. He's been an incredible advocate on this issue, and we are so grateful for the work that he has done to bring us to this place. And I want to thank the Labor Council. I want Kim Tavaloni is here representing the Labor Council. Thank you so much. Our community health partners and advocates and so many people who care so deeply about this issue. You know, I think we need to recognize that everyone that is here with us today wants our city to get to a better place. We may have differences of opinion as to how we get there, but we know that that is at the forefront of what we have to do as a city if we are going to make sure that we help those who are most in need. And so everyone recognizes the importance of coming together today to do just that. And I am so proud to be standing here to talk just a little bit about where our system is and where our system needs to go. In fact, San Francisco does an incredible job. We serve over 30,000 people in our behavioral health system. But in that 30,000, we know that there are 4,000 that are dual diagnosed and are struggling with homelessness. And we know that we have to do better. This is why so many people are frustrated. Not only the people who are working in our public health system, but people who are the ones that sadly are out there who need our assistance and need us to do better. And today, with this compromise, we are proposing to do better. Mental Health SF is going to be a program that is going to be settled at the Board of Supervisors with a number of compromises to make the right kinds of investments in the people who serve those with behavioral health challenges in expanding our mental health beds, in working with the community to get community input on changes, and making sure that we are collaborating every step of the way. And let me be clear, this will be an expensive program and we know it. And I have made a commitment along with the members of the Board of Supervisors to make sure that we are making better investments because it is necessary. Those investments will be increasing the pay of some of the employees that are working in this system. It will be loan forgiveness and other programs that we need to do to incentivize people to want to work in this city, in this industry. It will be making sure, again, we expand the number of beds. It will be to make sure that we have an advisory committee of people who work in this industry to help advise on policies so that when we make decisions, we're not doing those decisions in isolation. We also know with our behavioral health system, 
And as I had said time and time again, there is a real issue around equity. And in fact, of those 4,000 people that we know we are not serving properly, 35% of them are African American. And we need to call out the injustices in these systems and make deliberate investments in targeting the populations that continue to get left out when we propose new solutions to support the communities that we know are most vulnerable. So we are gonna be making deliberate investments around making sure that African Americans are supported as we move this process forward. I really want to thank Dr. Nagusa Bland and his team, as well as Dr. Colfax and the members of the Department of Public Health, the people who work in the front line, the people who work in the administrative offices, because I know for so many years you have been doing the work, the difficult work of trying to manage a system with what you have, with the resources you have, and not necessarily getting the support you needed to do it. And that change starts today. That change won't happen overnight. But we are working towards making this a more just, a more equitable, a more fair system, Use, using data, using resources, reforming our business tax system, which we're working on to identify new revenues and making the hard decision to, re to revise our capital plan so that we can identify the capital resources needed. And although we were looking at years later a public health bond on the ballot, I have already sent a letter along with support from the supervisors to look at a way in which we can move that public health bond to November of next year so that we can expand our beds, we can acquire board and care facilities, and we can continue to make sure that we not only have the people in terms of resources, but we have the capital necessary to expand out this system. Now, I know that time and time again, People have talked about what happened in the 1980s, when our city was faced with a very similar crisis, when we were faced with the AIDS crisis in our city, and how we were not supported by the federal government, and so many people came together, and San Francisco, and San Francisco General in particular, was the leader in the fight to really focus on addressing the challenges with AIDS and HIV in our city. And for the first time this year, we have less than 100 new diagnosed HIV uh, patients in San Francisco, which is truly historic. That came with resources. That came with us coming together. That came with bold policy changes. And that's what we're doing today. And I am so excited for the future of mental health in San Francisco because I know that this is the right way to do it. This is the right approach to develop the resources and make the kinds of changes that will help the people that we know need it the most. We have to start looking at mental health in a whole nother way than we did in the past. Because when you think about it, we have hospitals that deal with physical issues, right? Cancer, and if you break your arm or if you, something that you can feel. But what happens when someone is a schizophrenic? What happens when someone develops dementia or all these other things? What are we doing to make sure that we are helping those people and meeting them where they are? This is where we need to go as a city. This is where we need to go as a country. And I'm proud to be here to support Mental Health SF in achieving that goal with the members of the Board of Supervisors. And I want to thank, I want to thank Supervisor Hillary Ronan and Supervisor Matt Haney again.
for bringing great leaders in this process. And I really, really want to also thank Supervisor Raphael Mandelman. We are going to work together to get this done. And so without further ado, at this time, I'd like to welcome to the podium Supervisor Hillary Ronan. Thank you so much, Madam Mayor. And uh, Matt and I are so happy to be leading on this issue together. Yes, we did it. We came together. <laughs> and we're looking forward to continuing with the bond to lead and to fix this crisis in our streets. Before I make my comments, I just want to acknowledge two people who changed their schedules last minute to be here and might have to leave early. Our newly elected public defender and district attorney, Mano Raju and Chesa Bodin. <laughs> they were with us when we announced Mental Health SF, and they are with us when we're announcing its uh, introduction into law in, in, in its final form today. Thank you for being with us every single step of the way. We really appreciate you and are so excited for your leadership. Everyone, we just created the first universal mental health and substance use health care system in the country. <laughs> If you are homeless, uninsured, or on Medi-Cal and have a severe mental illness, Mental Health SF will treat you, create a plan and a path towards a stable and healthy life, and guide you to stay on that path. If you have health insurance, but you are not getting the care that you need and deserve, we will stand beside you and we will advocate with your provider until you get the care that you are legally entitled to. And if we see any patterns of illegal behavior on the behalf of private insurance companies, we will partner with our city attorney's office and we will hold those private companies accountable. Once Mental Health SF is fully up and running, no one in San Francisco has to stand alone when they are battling these diseases of the mind. And San Franciscans, if you see someone suffering on the street with mental illness or drug addiction, you're no longer gonna have to walk by and feel guilty because you didn't know how to help them. You're no longer gonna have to debate with yourself, should I call the police, should I not, is that a good thing, is that a bad thing? You will have a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week team of mobile clinicians to call who will come out and properly assist that individual at any time. And guess what? When General Hospital Psych Emergency Services is on diversion, there's a new place to go. It's called the Mental Health SF Service Center. And it will be open also 24 hours a day, seven days a week. And this mobile team will have a place to take people who will get immediate care from psychiatrists and psych nurses and social workers. And guess what? We're no longer gonna waste money, time, and the goodwill of patients and the rest of us, quite frankly, by watching people cycle from the street to psych emergency services to residential treatment and then right back out on the street where it is almost impossible to get better. Because we're gonna start the Office of Coordinated Care that are gonna help people get on a path to recovery and is going to expand services to ensure that there is availability of beds at all level of treatment, including permanent supportive housing. Mental Health SF is visionary, it is universal, it is bold, it is complete. And ladies and gentlemen, it is soon to be the law of San Francisco. <laughs> 
I want to join uh, the mayor in a few thank yous, especially to uh, the fabulous, incredible Lou Gerardo, who brought us all together and got us talking again and got us to the fabulous place we are today. I want to thank Matt Haney, uh, my, my partner in health <laughs> every step of the way. Um, it's a pleasure working with you on this, and it's so fun to team up. I want to thank you to the Mental Health Committee because this really was a team effort. We had incredibly brilliant, dedicated representatives writing this law together with us and serving the bridge between the front line uh, medical workers, patients and families, and our offices. SEIU 10 to 1. <laughs> SEIU 2015. <laughs> IFPTE Local 21. The National Union of Healthcare Workers. Progress Foundation, the Treatment on Demand Coalition, and Phil Ting's office, who has been there also with us from day one, and we'll hear from him in a moment. I also have to thank our absolutely incredible staff. Uh, we've all been living and breathing Mental Health SF for about a year, <laughs> and it never would have happened without them. Please give a hand to Carolyn Goosen, my chief of staff, <laughs> to my former aide Carolina Morales, to Matt Haney's chief of staff, Abigail Rivamonte Mesa, to Jackie Prager, and Leah McLaughlin on the campaign team, and to Nate Alby, our uh, uh, strategist, uh, special strategist. And, and then finally, I wanted to thank um, all the supervisors who were really there with us from the beginning, all of our co-sponsors, Supervisors Yi, Peskin, Fewer, Safa Yin, Brown, and especially a special thank you to Supervisors Walton and Mar, who uh, didn't waver and had our back every single step of the way. They believed in the vision and they were w w along there with our <laughs> right by our side, and we love you for it. And finally, I want to thank all of the frontline healthcare workers, including the nurses, the conservators, the peer workers, the social workers, the therapists, the psychiatrists, many of whom I see in, in the audience who do the most amazing, incredible work every day and don't get nearly enough appreciation. We appreciate you, we see you, we love you, and we're hoping this is going to make your work even more exciting and successful. Um, and then finally, um, I wanted to thank the mayor and, and the mayor's staff, um, who we started off with dis different visions, uh, but we did that hard work. We came together, we sat down, especially Dr. Colfax and Dr. Bland and all of her staff, and, and we did that hard work and we hammered it out and we got to an amazing place. So thank you very much, Mrs. Mayor. And with that, can you give a big, huge round of applause to Supervisor Matt Haney? Thank you. Well, um, I want to echo all of those thank yous that, that you already heard from Supervisor Ronan. But there's one that we left out, which is Supervisor Hilly Ronan, who did incredible, tremendous work. Um, literally, w w when, I, when I got elected, she pulled me in, I think, in the first couple weeks and said, what do you think about doing a universal mental health care program for San Francisco? And I said, well, you know, I just got here, so I, I'm, how does that work? Um, and we went and we brought in such an extraordinary a coalition of frontline workers, of nurses, of social workers, um, everyone who was able to help us draft this legislation, um, the Coalition on Homelessness who's here, so many folks with direct experience working in this system helped us tra draft what is in front of us here today. And I want to say this one more time, which is that Mental Health SF will make San Francisco the first city in the country to provide universal access to coordinated mental health care and substance use treatment. Give it up for that. That is a huge accomplishment here. So what, what we know is that there are so many people in our community, many of whom are living on the streets, um, others who are suffering quietly, um, who are not receiving the care that they need. And our system, I think, does incredible work. There are so many amazing people who work within the system. But we aren't doing enough right now to actualize the fact that mental health care should be treated as a right in our city. If you 
are sick, if you have somebody you need to talk to, if you are diagnosed or you, you are dual diagnosed, you need to have a system that actually takes care of you, that coordinates your care, and doesn't turn you away. Um, Mental Health SF will create a 24-7 mental health services center where anyone can go for care. We will have intensive case management and an office of care coordination so that people do not fall through the cracks. We will have a street response team so that first responders to mental health crises are not the police, but trained clinicians. And I want to um, echo again, and I want to shout out uh, Chesa Boudin and Mano Raju, who are here, because our jails right now should not be the place where people are getting mental health care. Um, we need to have actual hospitals and community care and supportive housing where people are getting treatment. So our excitement to partner with the two of you and create a system that actually works um, is so exciting. Um, we also are going to need to expand our system so that we aren't putting people back out onto the streets because there isn't a bed available for them. And we need everyone, including people who have private insurance, to have a city that will support them and advocate for them. Every day, people who are mentally ill or severely addicted are abandoned on our streets, cycling in and out of emergency rooms, leaving our residents and neighborhoods to deal with the consequences. Instead, we need a sy system that actually looks out for them, that takes care of them, that supports them, and has a place for all of us to go to re receive the care that we deserve. So I want to thank everybody who's here. I also want to give a huge, huge thank you to Mayor Breed and her team, Dr. Colfax and, and Dr. Bland. This, this is the type of leadership that the residents of our city are demanding. Um, it's the type of leadership where we work together, where we, where we go oversee our, we, we work out our differences, but we also make sure that we're leading in a bold way, that we're leading in a truly San Francisco way, um, and we are done with the incrementalism. We are done with the tinkering. We need big changes, and we need everyone in our city to have the opportunity to receive care. Um, lastly, I want to also recognize Abby from my, my chief of staff who's here. I, she's been working so in, incredibly hard. Um, and to all of the supervisors and, and assembly member Phil Ting and everyone who's here with us, we could not have done this without all of you. Thank you. Sometimes our uh, assembly members go off to Sacramento and forget about the bread and butter issues of San Francisco. Not assembly mem member Phil Ting. He has been with us, dedicating his time and his energy and his incredible staff, Mark Chucklebain, uh, to, to envision and bring Mental Health SF to life. Assembly member. Thank you, Supervisor. You know, I am so excited to be here today because it's just an acknowledgement of San Francisco, is that when we come together, we can solve major issues. And today is a day where we can all celebrate, where we had a variety of concerns, real concerns about how do we implement Mental Health SF, how do we make this program reality, real issues about how do we offer this in a universal way, and how do we really make sure that those who really need it get this opportunity. And I'm so proud of our city that we were able to come together, come together as a unified city on really what is one of the hardest issues out there. I, I've gone up and down the state uh, to really look at what are some of the best practices in solving mental health. And while many of them are here in San Francisco, it's very clear if you just look at our city, we're not doing enough. We're not doing it in the most efficient way. We're not doing it in the most uh, radical way or in the most thoughtful way. And oftentimes, it's something that people ask you or people commonly talk about. When we talk about many of the problems, we all say mental health is one of the major issues. Well, until today, we hadn't really been putting it forward in the most bold way. This is saying that not only is mental health one of the major issues, it is now one of the major issues for our city. And this is us coming together, coming together and saying that we are all going to work on this together. And that we know this is not an easy problem to solve. This is the easy part. The announcement, the program. We know Dr. Colfax has got the hardest job next uh, because he's actually going to have to deliver on much of what we are discussing. But let us all own this together. Let us come together as a city and say, this is something that we need to solve together. 
because it is something, be, because it's not about pointing fingers at each other or pointing out who's doing what or who's not doing what. It's about an acknowledgement that we need to do better together, we need to do more together, and that as a city, enough is absolutely enough. And my hope is that this could be a model for what's gonna be done at the state. In other cities, we'll also take a look and really look at what we're doing here and seeing if they can replicate it, because that's often what happens. What, one of our crazy ideas is crazy one year, and five years later, it is the best practice across the state and across the country. And I have every confidence that once we get this right, the mayor is going to have every other mayor in the city, in the country going, how did you do that mental health program? How did you get that started? How did you really get this thing off the ground? And I have no doubt, I have complete confidence in our city that we are going to make that a reality. So let me again just thank our mayor, thank uh, Supervisors Ronan and Haney for really leading the charge, but most of all, for coming together and solving this problem together. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we've got to give this next speaker, uh, Dr. Grant Colfax, a major round of applause. Poor Dr. Colfax had to start his job in San Francisco in the middle of a battle between the Board of Supervisors and the Mayor's office. That wasn't easy, and he did it with grace and kindness and a willingness to work with all of us, and I have no doubt that he's gonna do a tremendous job implementing Mental Health SF, Dr. Grant Colfax. Good afternoon, everyone. So thank you, Supervisor Ronan, and thank you, Mayor Breed. Thank you, Mayor Breed, <laughs> for bringing us all here today and bringing the city leaders together to solve the most urgent problem facing our city. You've made sure that the Department of Public Health, its clinicians, outreach workers, community partners, and clients, patients, the people we serve, contributed their collective wisdom to this transformative plan for San Francisco. And under your leadership, Mayor Breed, with the help of people here today, we will make a positive impact in transforming our behavioral health system to serve the people in greatest need. Thank you again, Supervisor Ronan and Supervisor Haney, for your commitment to health and dignity for San Franciscans experiencing homelessness, mental illness, and substance use disorders. The Department of Public Health shares the compassion and urgency you bring to this vital work. I really want to thank the Health Department staff who spent lots of time in City Hall figuring this work out. I particularly want to acknowledge, including Dr. Negosi Bland, Director of Mental Health Reform, Dr. Hallie Hammer, Dr. Irene Sung, Greg Wagner, our finance director, who's going to figure out how we're going to pay for all this. But you know, much of this work, much of the work laid out in Mental Health SF is already underway, and many of the people I talked about are already doing this work. Our incredible street medicine, shelter health, and community outreach teams are building trust with people living on the streets, finding ways to engage them in care, and saving lives from overdose prevention to starting people on medications every day to treat their substance abuse and mental health disorders. The health department is already collaborating with the Department of Homelessness and Supportive Housing and other departments and key stakeholders to ensure that the most vulnerable people on the streets get into housing, care, and other safe settings because we know this is key to helping people in their recovery process. We are already planning to expand the Behavioral Health Access Center and to create a methamphetamine sobering center, which Supervisor Manzelman and I chaired, and we recently re uh, released those results. We are focusing on intensive case management so that people on the street can develop strong, trusting, and therapeutic relationships with a person who can get them the help we need. We have identified that we need to hire more people in this role and to serve more people who need this level of intensive care. And thanks to Mayor, Mayor Breed's investment, 
we have seen the addition of 212 behavioral health beds across our system. And we are planning to add 800 more in the future. The agreement we are announcing today will allow us to scale up the things we do well, change the things we do not do well, and modernize our behavioral health care system to catch up with the science of behavioral health so that San Franciscans can be confident that we are providing the best solutions available. Mental health will allow us to invest in our workforce, both in civil service and community-based organizations, so that people dedicated to serving others can afford to work here and do the things they do so well. This is a visionary framework, and I am optimistic that resources will follow. This will enable the department and its community partners to carry out the plan in a way that is evidence-based, that advances equity and reduces harm. We know that wellness and recovery are possible for everyone. This agreement and the unity we are showing here today are part of San Francisco's legacy. We come together to do great things. We've done it with HIV. We've done it with Healthy San Francisco. Now is the time to transform behavioral health care. Together, we can make a difference and save lives. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Colfax. Now we are going to hear from two uh, members of the Mental Health SF Steering Committee uh, that are leaders in this field. Um, I also want to correct a mistake. I forgot to personally mention one of my sheroes, Kim Tavaloni, who represented the Labor Council on this committee and played an incredibly important role. Thank you, Kim. Um, but first, we're going to hear from the Executive Director of the Progress Foundation, Steve Fields. Good afternoon. Um, the uh, community-based nonprofit agencies were invited to the table by supervisors Ronan and Haney right from the beginning of this effort. Um, I think it's probably been no secret for a long time that a lot of the innovative work at the street level in the communities, hiring people with lived experience to be primary caregivers and treatment providers in the system, has been pioneered in one of the richest community-based nonprofit systems of care in the country, and that's in San Francisco, and we're proud of that. Um, the, the process that started back with Supervisor Ronan and Haney coming up with a bold and exciting new idea not to just tinker around the edges, but to go for broke, to go for the fundamental idea that behavioral health services should be a right, that access to services should not be denied to individuals because of their lack of payment capability, because of their status in the community, and because they have a silent voice that never gets heard. And we signed on to that effort because it was exciting and interesting and promised to actually bring some fundamental change. The promise of the new vision and for addressing the challenge of serving people who are suffering on the street, but also of strengthening a treatment system that is creaking at the edges, that without more support is not going to be able to continue to deliver the services that it has, was what brought us to support the Mental Health SF agenda. I want to say, though, that without the uh, work of the Department of Public Health, without the support of the mayor's office and, and the incredible staff that showed up to help work through the differences between Mental Health SF and, and the mayor's proposal, we wouldn't be standing here today. This represents the best of leadership, two visions that fundamentally were not different from one another, but had different approaches, had to be brought together so that we didn't lose everything because we couldn't come up with a way to put everything in one package. And it's only been through the leadership of Mayor Breed and the leadership of Supervisor Haney and Ronan and the support of members of the Board of Supervisors. It, I've been working in the system for almost 50 years. And I, it's the first time I've seen such a confluence of leadership and the political side of the city committed to improving the behavioral health service system here. We all have ideas and we all have energy 
And I want to acknowledge Supervisor Mandelman's leadership early on in this. So in a way, it looked like it was inevitable that points in the process, it looked like it might not make it. But we know better in San Francisco. We're not going to lose an opportunity because we're going to be fighting for what we believe in on both sides of any issue. So I want to um, acknowledge Dr. Colfax. Um, I want to acknowledge the mayor's staff who contributed enormously to this success. And we want to also acknowledge the advocates in the community who kept the pressure up on all of us to not let this opportunity slip away. It's an exciting time to be in San Francisco. It's about to engage on a powerful exercise of implementing a shared vision for behavioral health services for the most vulnerable citizens of our city. Community-based providers, the nonprofit sector in this city, are ready to begin the challenging and work of collaborating with city and county services and with the various um, other people providing major services to our mentally ill and unfortunately the criminal justice system and in other sectors to make sure that this is our opportunity to create a program that will become a model. And we're excited to be in this engagement with everybody. Keep watching, keep participating, Keep bringing your ideas into the system because we're going to build an incredible behavioral health system in this city. Thank you. Thank you so much, Steve. And, and last but not least, um, an incredible woman who's going to close us out. Jennifer is Dean, a registered psych nurse and a union leader with SEIU 10 to 1. Where are you, Jennifer? Here she is, ladies and gentlemen. I've heard a lot of thank yous, so I'm going to skip that part. Thanks, everyone. It's an honor to be gathered here today with San Francisco's elected officials and my colleagues, especially those of us from the community and frontline staff. We've been working together to serve residents and are announcing a milestone in our city and our country, the creation of the first universal mental health care program for those who need care. Mental Health SF will enhance the lives of the residents of the city of San Francisco. As a psychiatric registered nurse, it has been my passion and my duty to ensure adequate care is provided to all my clients, regardless of their station in life. Together with Supervisors Hillary Ronan and Matt Haney, our community providers, mental health advocates, the Department of Public Health, and Mayor Breed, we've created something truly revolutionary. We've come together to form a social policy that will serve everyone who's been touched by a mental health issue and those who are also unhoused or struggle with substance abuse. The people of San Francisco will benefit from Mental Health SF for years to come. My hope is that by implementing this new coordinated care, mental health care system and by enhancing and increasing the services we provide as a city, that the people here will finally get the care they need and deserve, regardless of their income or insurance. Everyone in this city deserves to have their mental health conditions treated. They shouldn't have to be in crisis to access care, and when they are struggling with a persistent mental illness, shouldn't have to wait multiple days, weeks, or even longer to be seen by a clinician. We're also suffering with a crisis of bed capacity. I work for the Department of Public Health, and my work site is at the Behavioral Health Care Center. We have been fighting to make sure that beds do not close that serve people for life. Right now, 54 people have been evicted from their homes in San Francisco, and our mayor has dedicated a promise to make sure that beds at board and care homes will be reallocated, yes, reinvested in and that these people will not go homeless. But today, we do not have a place to move these people into, and it is a crisis of the highest order. No one should be destabilized because their housing that the city is providing is going away. So, as providers of care and creators of policy, we set a new standard for the country to follow. I'm proud very proud to have been a part of the process to make a way for people who struggle with addiction and mental illness. This is a good day for the people of San Francisco. Let us hope that it is the beginning of a national trend to provide universal care to all of our communities because we need it 
and we deserve it. And America is a rich country. San Francisco is a rich city. We can provide this care. Thank you all. All right. Um, well, give it up one more time for Jennifer and all of our frontline workers who provide care every day. Um, this is absolutely a good day for San Francisco. Um, it's a day where we came together and determined uh, to address with a bold solution uh, one of the biggest crises facing our city. I also want to say very clearly that we aren't done yet. Um, there's a lot more work that needs to be done to see this through, to implement it, to fund it. Um, we may need to ultimately go to the ballot to get more funding for this. Um, and we also are going to need Assembly Member Ting to help us in Sacramento. Um, so we are all going to have to keep this coalition together. But what we did today was provide a vision, a framework, and a path forward. Thank you all for your leadership. Thank you again, Supervisor Ronan, Mayor Breed. Let's get it done. Thank you.